as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Praise the Lord. I trust that uh, you are well. And the Lord has continued to, to be good to you. Uh, welcome for this program. My name is Festo. And I'm born again. We have begun this session. Uh, we have done one part. So this is the continuation. The second part of, uh, of this program. Uh, which we have given it a name of Sonship in the kingdom and uh, uh, i welcome you so that uh, we can glean and we can break this bread of life so let's just pray as we begin thank you for this morning for this time of the day O oh lord in the name of jesus we give you praise for your goodness for your mercies which are always sufficient oh god into our lives Thank you for my viewer, O oh Lord, wherever they are listening, O oh God, from. I pray that, Lord, we shall lift their spirits. You shall bless their hearts that, God, they will hear. And they will shall hearken to what, Lord God, you are teaching us this day in the name of Jesus Christ. So bless, O oh God, uh, everything that, Lord God, they do. May your goodness and your mercies. Oh God, be upon our lives in a very special way. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. So uh, we began uh, in this topic called Sonship in the Kingdom. And in the book of Judges 10, we saw a man called Jer, Jer who uh, was a deliverer. The Lord raised him and he had 30 sons. And these sons were in different cities, were in different cities which were called Havod Jihar. And they proclaimed, they, they enforced the, 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 the thoughts, the, the desire, the objectives of the kingdom. And the Bible says for, 20, for 22 years that the, 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 the God's people stayed in peace. Uh, without rebellion because of these sons. And from that point, we continue to see that Jesus Christ is a faithful son. And he has been faithful in his house, as we saw that. That uh, Jesus is faithful in his own house also, as, as Moses was faithful. We saw that in, in the book of Hebrews. Uh, chapter 3 verse 1 to 6 he was faithful and he did what was in the perfect plan will of the Lord and uh, we shall continue even in the same thought we shall continue because this is a continuation of what we have already built so I was just uh, doing a, a, a quick recap of um, of what we did in the last session we can continue in the same we can fall up in in the same manner so jesus christ came from the father and he knew the mind of the father if you we if you sent your child to the marketplace uh to 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 to, to the stores which we call supermarkets or a, a shop and you want them to to bring you some items, you, can, you, you want to be sure that your son or your daughter understands what you have sent them to do there. So that they will bring exactly what you have sent them to do. If you are in employment or you are, uh, you are employed somewhere, then you realize that you must have the mind of your master. You must have the mind of... Uh, 
your, 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 your manager. You must have the mind of the objective of the institution or the company. You must have that. So that what you are doing, every course of direction that you want to take, it will be in line with what uh, is, uh, is in the objective of the institution you are working with. So Jesus Christ is he, he has the mind of the Father. And that is, he is submitted to achieve that, to, to do the will of the Lord. That is his meat, as he will also speak in John 4. He will say that the meat is to do the will of the Lord. Uh, he has the will of the Lord at heart. He understands his mandate. He understands also his scope. And he, he is, uh, is willing to do that. When you read in the book of um, uh, Matthew 9, 6, it says, But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. When he said to the paralytic, Arise, take half the bed, and go to your house. Jesus had power. It's only that, it's not only that Jesus had um, had understood, but had power. Jesus had authority and power, and he taught in many ways. And he was an example for himself, but he had power also to do whatever thing that, uh, that he was supposed to do. Let's look at, uh, at a scripture in the book of First Thessalonians 2, 7 to 11. And see Paul in in Thessalonica, and see a son who understands what he is supposed to do. We know the calling of Paul, and how Paul of uh, of, of Tarsus, all soul is changed to Paul, and he is he, he gets in a course. He understands now the reason why. Why he was, he, the Lord created him. When you read in the book of Galatians, Paul says, God separated me from, from the womb. So, Paul had a cause. And as a faithful son, we see some of the things that uh, Paul uh, folded his sleeves and he did passionately. And let's see. First Thessalonians 2. It says, But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes our own child, so affectionately longing for you. We were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also your, our, our, own, our own lives, because you you had become dear to us. You see, he a, he, he was compassionate to the congregation, to the people of the Salonica. He gave them all the gospel, not on the gospel, but his own life. He poured his life. He's an example of diligent son, Paul. He was with, he was, uh, he was in the desert of Arabia, where he was there for. For, for, for a while. And the Lord taught him. The Lord prepared Paul. And then he become an apostle of God. Just being taught of the spirit of God. And we see his input. Even in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Penning many letters. You see. Encouraging many churches. Bringing forth sons also. Because he's a diligent son, becoming an apostle, being a steward as, uh, as 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 2 says, let a man so consider us a servant of Christ, a stewards of the mysteries of God, that it pleased God to invest in him and he named to be mysteries of the kingdom. You see, uh, in his life. And he says to this uh, to this church, he says to Thessalonica, he says, uh, 
but we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother. You see, this is aspect which we can also see in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ was compassionate when he met with this woman uh, of Nain, and his first son had, or, uh, had just died, and this woman had no hope. He says, woman, don't, don't cry, don't cry. And Jesus Christ turns things around there, and he resurrects the son, and he gives the son back to the mother. He is compassionate. When he sees the multitude follow him for, for a day and they are so exhausted, they have nothing to eat. Jesus, like a nursing, a nursing mother, he says, Poor uh, Philip, give this multitude some food to eat. He wants also to raise Philip and show him it's possible. But in the same way, he's so compassionate about. Uh, uh, in the in the lives of the people, and he wants to give them something to eat, and he, he 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 is so compassionate, and he sits them down, and you know the multiplication of the bread and uh, uh, and fish, and they they eat, and they are so uh, warmed again to continue. Jesus is so compassionate. It says in verse 9 of Thessalonians, 7, uh, Thessalonians 2, verse, verse 9 says, For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preached to you the gospel of God. Paul was not a burden to any person. Jesus was not a burden to any person. Actually, he was a, a working brother. Brethren, he says, you remember brethren. You see, Paul worked with his own hands that he may not be a burden to any person. And that is also an aspect of a sonship, not to be a burden. It is not good when we, we borrow things, not because of our laziness. It is not good that we sleep so much. Well, we should be doing something. There are opportunities which we have, which can be also be a blessing, can be also a blessing to another person. When you go to the streets, you realize, you see beggars. Some beggars begging, you know. And you realize the beggar who is probably on a, on, on a, on a, wheel, on a wheelchair, there is a strong man who is pushing that wheelchair just around, just sourcing for money and begging for something. You realize that if this person who was strong enough just to, to push this, this wheelchair all day long, that they concentrated, they trusted the Lord to have something to do, they will do even much more. Paul here he's saying he toiled with his own hands. That's a good aspect of, of laboring with his own hands. That he will not be a, 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 a burden to any person. Jesus is a working brother. And you remember when, when the disciples were crossing to the other side of the sea. And Jesus Christ is in the boat but is, uh, is, is beneath. He's just taking a nap. Is just looking at these disciples because it's discipling them, is showing them, is a process of making the sons, is process of making these disciples because he knows that they will be dependable people. He knows that they will have to handle some of these challenges, and he's just there in the boat, and the sea now becomes too much for the disciples. And they are crying. They are saying, Master, save us. We are, we are dying. And the boat is tossed by the, by the waves and it's, 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 it's too much. And Jesus Christ uh, comes up and he speaks to the sea. He calms the ocean and there is calmness in the sea. They are seeing how Jesus is handling issues. They are, they are drawing lessons from what Jesus Christ is doing. 
We are watching at Jesus Christ and what he is doing. And we are also in the making as sons. We are also making. So Paul is encouraging them that we are working brothers. Even in the Mideast, we did not become burdensome to, to you. But we were, we were of a blessing even to give you something uh, that was so precious. To give you our lives, to give you what even we, we had. We gave you all. You are witnesses and God also who devoutly and justly and blameless. We behaved ourselves among you who believed. As you know, we exalted, converted, and charged every one of you as the Father does his own children. Paul here is, is also speaking in another aspect of we were like fathers to you. We charged you. We converted you. You remember the issue. All Jesus did with the woman who was caught in the adulterous act. And he says, even me, I'll not judge you. Even me, I'll not condemn you. But go sin no more. He liberates the woman. He gives the woman power to overcome that which uh, uh, brought her down. These inclinations and desire to continue sinning, Jesus is saying, is liberating her and says, go sin no more. He does not condemn her. She, he tells her, go sin no more. She, he empowers her. Jesus empowers the woman that she will go out and she will be strengthened. She will now uh, live right because she is empowered of the Lord. This is like converting, comforting father who is working in the lives of our lives even today. This is an example of Paul who understood, who sunk his mind, his heart is in the gospel of Christ Jesus. And he demonstrated even these aspects which are in Christ Jesus to these people. And as sons, uh, and as the Lord is, is, is preparing us, is lifting us, is, uh, is, is helping us. So we will realize that uh, we will continue to, to learn this aspect of what uh, of, of what the Lord desires of our lives. And we begin to, to have this aspect of compassion. These aspects, this aspects of a working brother that I'm not working only on my course, but I can sacrifice also for the cause of another. I can do this for the cause of, uh, for the benefit of the church, for the benefit of God's people, even into the places where God. As, uh, as, as, as helped me to be. And Jesus Christ finished his course. So Paul also finished the course. He stayed in the course until the end. The scriptures in, in the book of John, it says, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished and the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I'm thus. Now a vessel full of wine was sitting there and they filled a sponge of the sour wine, put in on Aesop, and put it, put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it's finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Jesus Christ finished well, finished, accomplished he did not retaliate. He did not move out of the course. We don't see Jesus Christ going to farm some nyanya in some place and then he realized, oh, I was called to this place. I was called to redeem mankind. Then he comes back. No. But whatever place we see Christ Jesus, we see him still on the course of the redemption of man until to the point where he, he finishes uh, his course. Paul also, in, the, in the, the book of 2 Timothy, uh, I think chapter 4, he is being poured out. He has run the race. He has completed his course. That is very important to stay in the course. And I think we shall elaborate that further. That it is very important as a son to begin in a course and to finish in a course. In a course. Very importantly.
Now, another aspect of a son uh, is, uh, is growth. When you look at uh, Galatians 4, 1 to 7, it says this. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under uh, guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage and the elements of the world. But when we, when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer slaves, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Now, this is another aspect of, of, uh, of sonship. There must be growth. We must grow. Because when the heir is still a child, he's, he cannot handle nothing. It's just, uh, it's just, um, just plain as we can see in, in in the course of our of our of our lives. The responsibility ranges between just small responsibility and greater responsibilities, depending on the abilities and depending on the maturity of how we can handle. When we look at aspects of um, of our, of our nation, like the, the area of education, you realize that the government invests a lot of finances in the area of, in the sector of education, that student may go forth and may study. And there is a lot of finances that the government invests in that particular area. And you realize, uh, in the high schools, the students go to tertiary colleges and universities, and then they are in their careers. The, the government has invested in this. They grow in the area of the speciality. And without this maturity, it's very hard for, for, for a person to be fully called, uh, spe to specialize in a, in a particular course. When we are, we are still small, when we are still growing, when we are still battling on the small things, it is very hard for us to be responsible sons in the kingdom. The word there is saying, verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those who were under the law, and that we might receive the adoption as son. God is redeeming us from a place. There are places where we have glued ourselves. We have stayed as a people. We look things from afar when they are being done. This does not uh, necessarily mean that we are infants and small children, but we may be even grown up people. But a place of responsibility, a place where God wants us to influence things. We cannot reach to that place because we, are, we have not exercised our muscles, mental muscles, our physical muscles. We cannot handle what the Lord wants us to handle. So we stay in those places. The blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed us from sin. Sin is one aspect that will, will make us be there, you see. Fear of... Or, or, to take responsibility will, will make us to continue to stay in places where we, we will not grow up and mature to be a responsible son who will take responsibility. This son will not take responsibility. He is subject. So all things are his. A child is not able to drive. A child is not able to uh, to go to war, when you give him an amnesia, he will not be able to handle that because he's still a child. But 
with the training, they will be able to take responsibility and even to become responsible people like doctors. When you go to a doctor, you want this person not to be a child and to do error, uh, try and errors in your body. And you want them to just know what is aching in our bodies and then treat the thing specifically because they have been under training. So uh, may the Lord bless you as we trust the Lord to be responsible sons and grow up and take responsibility in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of our Lord, may you bless my viewer today. Help us that, Lord God, we shall know your will and your purpose, the Lord mighty God you are calling us to. And, Lord God, not to settle to anything, that, Lord, we, we will grow to take up that which, God, you are calling us to be a partaker, to, to, to be our children who are influencing the kingdom of God because we have been taught and we have grown, oh God, even in the, in the grace the Lord might you have released, oh God, Father, of growth, oh God, and responsibility. We bless you and we give you praise, oh God, for your good and faithful. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.